Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. We continue um, talking about random variables and after the introduction uh, to random variables, which was during the last lecture, um, let's talk about certain properties of random variables and today's theme is expected value of the random variables. Uh, I do suggest you to watch this lecture from unizor.com website instead of directly on some other like YouTube etc because um, the website contains notes to this lecture which is very important to uh, familiarize yourself with before or after the lecture um, doesn't really matter but it's very important to, to read the notes um, okay so back to expected value now before presenting this in a purely theoretical form. I would like to, um, to have a couple of examples where um, it would be quite obvious actually what expected value is. Okay, example number one. Okay, the game of roulette. So the game of roulette is when, um, well, you have a wheel with different partitions. Um, the American uh, uh, version of this game has 36 numbers from 1 to 36 0 and double zero so 38 different partitions on the wheel and you're spinning the ball and spinning the wheel and spinning the ball and after they stop spinning the ball actually falls into one of these partitions now you have a choice to bet on something but we will consider only one particular version of this type of a um, game when you are betting on a certain number let's say you are betting on number 23 doesn't really matter so if the ball falls on the number 23 you win if it doesn't you lose well obviously the chances to fall on the number 23 if you have 38 different partitions are very small and the chances to lose are very large so we have to equalize it with some um, payoff now the payoff standard payoff is if you win so if the ball actually falls on the number you predicted you will have uh, 36 times what you have bet and let's say you bet a dollar right so you're getting 36 dollars but if it's um, uh, non-23 you are basically losing your bet which is one dollar so that's the game well random experiment is basically play the game um, so what are the results of the random experiments these are res results 38 different results one of them is successful and one of them is not successful now considering these are 38 results with uh, presumably equal chances um, to occur because you know the wheel is made quite correctly and the ball is round etc etc so all these partitions have equal chance to occur which means since there are 38 of these partitions we have to assign the probability of 1 38 to each result okay now what does it mean that the probability is 1 38th of each result? Well, it means that if you have, let's say, n different experiments where n is a really large number and the larger the better, then 1 38th of this will be, let's say, 23 and n 38th of this would be number 1 and uh, n 38th times will be number let's say double double zero etc etc so each result of these out of these 38 will occur approximately n divided by 38 times right that's what it means that out of n experiments we have 38 different results with equal chances so approximately 1 38 of n results will occur with a with a concrete number, let's say number 23 or any other number. All right, 
So, which means that if we will conduct n experiments and n is relatively big, in n time, n divided by 38 times, we will win uh, $36. Okay. Let me just change the... In all other cases, and how many all other cases? If n divided by 38 is winning, then 37 uh, times n divided by 38. All other, they are the losing um, uh, results. So you will lose $1, so you have to subtract times $1. So what's the result of this arithmetic? Well, the result is um, minus n divided by 38, right? This is 36 and this is 37, so it will be minus 1n, all right? So, this is approximately the monetary result of n games, approximately, which means that the n is, as the n is increasing, it will be closer and closer to this but not necessarily. I mean, you can play 10 games and you can win 10 times. Yes, in theory it is possible, although unlikely. But if you will go through, I don't know, 1 million games, more or less it will be approximately something like this. So there are certain theorems which are basically saying um, they are estimating the, the, the closeness of the real results to this average result. Now, okay, so if this is approximately the monetary result of your um, playing n games, then average per game would be divided by n, right? So per game average is, result is this. So if you bet one dollar on a game, then average result of this game would be minus one thirty-eight which means you will lose, basically, and casino will win. And that's how casino is making money, on averages. You see, if the number of people is great and everyone is, is, is playing many different games and the average per game is something like this, then as the number of people grows, the result will be closer and closer for the casino to win one thirty-eighth of each tower. Well, basically that's an example, and um, what I wanted actually to say is that this average obviously is not necessarily something which really occurs. I mean, if you bet a dollar, you either lose a dollar or you win thirty-six dollars. You will never lose uh, one thirty-eighth of a dollar. But again, among many, many different games, if you average it by the number of games, that would be uh, the, the, the result with the number of games relatively large. Now, ideally, I mean, speaking mathematically, if n tends to infinity, then the uh, net result of the average per game would tend to minus 138. Okay, so, so that, that's this particular example. Let's consider another example. Actually, uh, methodically, I think it's very important to explain a couple of concepts through examples first and then go to a more abstract description of what exactly we're talking about. So that's what basically I'm doing. So the second example is... All right. Um, in the beginning of the course on probabilities, I was talking about the person uh, Cavalier de Marais who lived in France very, very long time ago, and he basically um, in invented the game of dice, or one of the first people actually who, who was playing these, this game using certain, um, well, scientific approach, if you wish. So he was trying to modify the, uh, the basic game, and his proposition was, let's play the following game. We will roll four dices, 
support four dice or or we will roll one dice four times doesn't really matter and as a result of this experiment we will look for the number one appearing among all these four dice if it appears then the Cavalier de Marais who actually uh, invented this particular game would consider himself a winner if if he loses obviously uh, he will pay whatever whatever the amount he, he bet so let's say again he bet one I shouldn't say dollar there were no dollars at the time whatever the one is one doublon or whatever so he paid one he, he bet one and now we have four dice and we are looking for uh, number one to appear among these fours among, among these four dice all right how can we calculate the probability well we actually d d d uh, d talked about this particular problem uh, during the regular uh, lectures on probabilities and the uh, the really convenient way to do it is um, you see one can appear on one dice or on two dice and three or four or four dice I mean each one of these events has its own probability it's easier to um, to calculate the opposite probability that there are no ones which means that uh, the probability of not of not having any one uh, on four dice is um, the combination of probabilities of having not one on each one of those right so the probability is five over six for the first dice not to have one right out of six different sides of the cube five are not one and one one is uh, and only one side is one now but with each of these we have five different uh, versions for the second dice uh, five different sides for the second dice and five different for the third and five different for the fourth right so these are number of combinations which are uh, considered to be the non-one containing combinations so it's five times five times 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 five and the number of total combinations is six times six times, times six times six so that's what actually the probability of not having dice which is approximately 04823 okay so this is the probability of not having any ones on uh, on the four dice and obviously the probability of having one so this is not one so the probability of having one either one one or two ones or three ones or, or four four ones is the opposite of this which is one minus five six to the fourth which is approximately 0 0.5177 okay now so here is the game here is the probability for Cavalier de Marais to lose the game when there are no ones and this is the probability to win the game as you see this probability is greater than one uh, greater than half so it looks like he will be willing right winning so how can we calculate it in quantitative uh, terms well again let's consider we are playing end games against Cavalier de Marais or he's playing end games against us now if these are the probabilities probabilities of winning and losing so he will win approximately in this number of cases he will win his one doublon or leader or whatever else and he will lose i put the minus sign in these number of cases So this would be, since we are playing with one doublon only, so this would be his total 
average, not average, sorry, uh, approximation of, uh, of of his net net sum, which he will basically gain in this case after n games, right? Which is equal to n times 0 0.03 Five, four. So, this is the net amount he might approximately gain after playing n games if n is a significantly large number. <coughs> so, per game, <coughs> excuse me, so per game, we have to divide it by n, it will be 0 0.0354. So, this is his average win per game. It doesn't mean that he will actually win this particular amount every game, obviously not. He can either win one or lose one, not obviously this amount, but on average, if he will play a large number of games, then his average win per game would be this. So, this is how I'm basically approaching the uh, concept of expected value. I'm calculating the approximate value uh, of winning or, or losing or whatever per one particular random experiment. That's the idea. And that is a characterization of the random experiment itself, or the game in this particular case. So if my average per game is positive, like in this particular case, then it makes sense for the person actually who play this way, like Cavalier de Marais in this case, to play the game. Because since on average he will be will wi winning uh, each game, so even if he will win something and lose something, the winning will exceed the losing eventually, as the number of experiments um, goes to infinity. Doesn't mean that he will win during the first five games. He might lose actually. But again, his purpose is to make the number of games as, as, as big as possible. And that's what makes actually him as a net winner. Same thing with Casino. <coughs> In the previous game of roulette, which I was talking about, the Casino's purpose is to uh, invite as many people as possible and force them to, well, encourage them, I shouldn't say force, encourage them to play as much as possible. Because only the numbers will give the net result for uh, Cavalier de Marais or for a Casino, um, the results which is close to this theoretical average. All right. So that's it for examples, and now let's go to a pure theory. Now, pure theory is going along exactly the same uh, way as I was explaining in the examples. So first of all, we have to describe our um, uh, random events. So this is, let's call it omega, a combination of certain elementary events, right? Now we might have, let's say, k different elementary events. Now in case of roulette, we have 38 different results of the experiment, elementary events, right? In case of Cavalier de Marais, we have only two, basically. There is one or there is no one among these four dice. <coughs> so there are only two. Now, the second thing which we need is the probabilities of these events. So let's say we know the probabilities of these elementary events. Now, in case of roulette, it was 138 per each of them. In case of the game suggested by Cavalier de Marais, when there are only two events, one was uh, 0 0.51 something and another was 0 0.48 something. But the sum of them obviously is supposed to be equal to 1. All right. Um, now, next. Next is we are talking about certain random variable which is well, in case of our examples, is a winning, basically, the amount you win. Well, okay, it depends on the elementary events, right? In case of roulette, when we have 38 different versions and we are playing on number 23, 
on number 23 we have number 36 as a winning and all others had minus one because we are betting one dollar right and and that would be the losing uh, result so in case of roulette we would have minus one minus one minus one on one particular case we will have plus 36 and then minus one minus one again until the end in case of a Cavalier de Marais game we will have basically one and one uh, one we lose or one we win something like this right anyway we have certain results and I will put it x1 x2 etc xk these are the random variable this is random variable which is defined on these uh, elementary events. So I can actually say that the value of random variable on event EIs is equal to XIs. Where C, the Greek letter C, is usually used for random variable uh, in theory of probabilities. All right, so we've got that. This is our problem. Now, question is, what's the value of this random variable per experiment if the number of experiments goes to infinity that's what we're looking for our average win per uh, experiment per, per, per number of experiments if the number of experiments is very large I mean that's what gives us the the, the feeling for uh, kind of evaluating the game is it worth actually to play this particular game in the casino right so the average value of this random variable as the number of experiments goes to infinity that's what we are interested in all right so how can we evaluate it well consider we have n different experiments now if n is a very large number then what are the results of these experiments well approximately in uh, n times p1 cases the result would be E1. Approximately in n number P2 cases, the result will be E2, etc. And the n number PK cases, the result would be E, e case, right? Because that's what probability actually means. If we put these probabilities uh, for these elementary events, the meaning of the probability is so if this is 138, 138, 138, it means that if n is multiplied by the probability, it will be n divided by 38. We will have one particular result of the uh, spinning wheel. Let's say result 23 or 0 or double 0 or whatever else, right? So that's what it means. This is basically the definition of the concept of a probability. And since the results will be E1, E2, Ek, the the value of our random variable will be x1, x2, and x, 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 xk, right? So, what's the average? Well, if we have n different values of our random variable, then the sum of these divided by the total number of variables, uh, total number of experiments, sorry, is equal to the average per experiment, right? So in n times p1 cases my value is x1 in n times p2 cases my value is x2 which means that if I want to summarize all the values which, which our random variable took during all these experiments what would be my result? well my result would be n times p1 times x1 plus n times p2 p2 times x2 plus etc plus n times um, pk xk and divide it by number of experiments right which is equal to I will use the sigma sign P i x i where i from 1 to k which means p1 x1 plus p2 x2 plus p n p p3 x3 etc up to p 
k uh, x k so this is called a mathematical expectation or expected value of our random variable xi defined by this So all we did is we calculated what's the average value of our random variable. We summarized all the values uh, which it took during all the n experiments. And n times p1 times it took value x1, etc., etc. n times pk times it, it, it took the value xk. And we summarized them and we divide it by the number of experiments. That's average per experiment, right? That's how we calculate the average. We summarize all the values and divide it by the number of uh, units which we have summarized, right? Basically, that's it. That's the definition. Now, does it mean that it's the right way to say, well, the random variable C takes the average value of this? Well, that's not exactly correct. The word takes, it doesn't really necessarily take the value. Because as we saw, the value um, can be like minus 138. It does not take this particular value. It takes either 1 or minus 30, uh, either 36 or minus 1. Right? But again, the average is whatever, minus 138. Now, the, the correct way is that considering we know what's the ex expected value of the random variable, all we can say is that if we will experiment many, many times and we will calculate the average per experiment value, then it will be close to this. And the more experiments we conduct, the closer our result, our average per experiment, would be to this theoretical expected value or expectation or mathematical expectation all right so um, next lecture i'll probably devote to a couple of examples how to calculate this expected value by the way notice that this expected value uh, basically lost uh, its um, well dependency on elementary events we don't really need elementary events we need just the probabilities of these elementary events and the values which uh, our random variable took if that particular experiment resulted in that particular elementary event. So we can say uh, slightly different. Okay, let's consider uh, a random variable which, ta which takes the value x1 with the probability p1, x2 with probability p2, etc., and xk with probability pk, and what would be its expected value. Well, that's the formula, basically. We have, we have to summarize p1 times x1 plus p2 plus, uh, times x2, uh, uh, etc. So, um, basically, there is no elementary event involved in this uh, particular phraseology, if you wish. All we need is the values of the random variable and the probabilities it takes these values. And therefore, we can arrive with uh, expected value. All right, that's it for today. I suggest you again to look at the notes which are on unizor.com for this lecture. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Good luck.